Hey everybody, it is Professor Parrish and we are on week 15 of English 122 and I'm really excited. We only have uh, three weeks left of classes, if you can believe it. We only have uh, this week, we have next week, and then we have the finals. So class is winding down. I'm sure you all are excited, but I'm sure, sure you all are also very stressed right now. So with that being said, I do want to go ahead and say that if you are stressed as of right now, that is okay. I'm going to try to explain these next couple weeks as best I can to get you ready. The good news is we only have three weeks more of assignments and there's not a crazy lot due each week. So that should be all right, right? We have the part two of our research project due uh, this week along with discussion 15, which we'll talk about in this video. And then next week we have our, actually our last discussion forum, ha ha, along with a reflection essay, which I'll talk about all of that next week, along with like the review game for the final. And then our finals, really, you just have to take your final exam. And that's it. So should be all right, right? You guys have worked really hard. You've definitely earned it. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about the assignments for this week. So in the module guide, um, there is a section about writing a research paper on pages 1841 to 1866 that can be very helpful. So if you are somebody that struggles with writing a research paper or you have questions or concerns, this is a good chunk of text to go and reference. Um, it goes through a lot of different things in terms of what to expect, what you should be looking at, and it's very, very helpful. And we'll go over that in this PowerPoint here in just a second. But we also have the discussion form 15. Um, this discussion can be helpful as you work on the second part of your research paper. So I would actually in expect you to engage a little bit earlier than usual um, with this discussion form, which honestly, I wanna say something about the discussion forum. Two things. One, everybody has been super awesome about getting in early to the discussion forum and posting ahead. So I really have appreciated that. I think that a lot of you get on the discussion forum early, you start the thread. So those of you that are doing that, y'all get gold stars because that's really awesome and I appreciate it. Um, the other thing though is some of you may have noticed the last couple of weeks, if you've gotten instead of a five out of five, maybe a four or three or even a two out of five. And if you're wondering why that is, if you're getting five out of fives on your discussion forum, don't worry, <laughs> you're doing great. If you are getting a four out of five, that probably means that in your responses, there may be like some of your responses aren't as detailed as they could be. That's probably why. But I have been giving out several threes as of the last couple of weeks only because some people are just not doing a lot in the discussion forum. And honestly, when we only have two assignments a week, then you really should be engaging a lot in the discussion forum and talking. And some of the responses I've seen, like I've seen some students write the exact same response for multiple students. That's going to get your points docked. And I've seen some people that their actual forum post just isn't very detailed. It's like one or two sentences and they're like, okay, well, I covered what I need to. You need to go into a little more detail. So if you are emailing or questioning why I'm giving the grade that I am, that is why. Again, if you're getting five out of five, you're doing awesome. No worries. If you've gotten four out of fives, that just means there's a couple little minor hiccups, maybe some grammar errors, nothing to worry about, which the grammar in this class, y'all have been doing really good on. But I have noticed of some people are kind of slacking a little in the discussion form the last couple weeks. So I want to make sure that you go out strong at the end of this at the end of this semester. I don't want your grade to dip because you didn't add a couple extra sentences that you could in the discussion forum. So just to be transparent, I wanted to throw that out there. But we're gonna review the instructions um, so you can email me with any questions. Um, we're gonna also expect the second half of your research project to be submitted. It should be four to five pages long in MLA format and it will need a works cited page in MLA which will include five or more sources. So all together, your research project should have five or more sources. Now, one of those can obviously be your textbook. So that should be pretty easy to go to. And then the other four need to be some type of source, right? And we'll talk about that here with the PowerPoint in just a second. So as for the discussion forum for this week, I'm going to be asking which text are you analyzing for your research project in a simple sentence? give the theme of the text. You can also use a research question if you'd rather. We talked about that last week. Um, why is the theme important in today's world? Like, why is it relevant? Why does it matter? And then how many people do you think that it affects? And 
if it only affects a small population, that's not a bad thing. Sometimes topics are very specific and they only affect certain viewers. Like for example, you may say that if you're writing about like the author of To Kill a Mockingbird, how they were coerced by publishers into forcibly publishing a manuscript she didn't want to, well, you could argue that your audience being affected are those fans of her work or those that are reading the sequel. However, you could also say that it has a bigger audience, that maybe it's a sign that it's the publishers are kind of forcing the hand of elderly or older authors, and so there is a bigger audience there. Kind of just depends. Um, is it becoming more or less of an issue? Like that last example I just said, it could become a big issue if publishers start to pressure older authors to publish things they don't want to. So yeah, that is something to think about. And note your initial research and thoughts here. You can include these same ideas in part two of your research project. So part of this discussion forum is to allow you a platform where you can expand on your thoughts about your project. And if you write something, you're like, ooh, that sounds really good. <laughs> you can put that in your paper. Or if you have like someone gives you an idea, that could be something to feed off of. I want this discussion forum to be a place where you can kind of brainstorm ideas, explain your project and get feedback from your peers. Right? I think that that's important, that sometimes we need another pair of eyes, not only confirming what we're doing, like having people say, oh, that's an awesome idea, I really like that, but also saying, oh, that's really cool, have you talked about this, and giving you ideas that maybe you hadn't even thought of. So I'm really excited for this discussion forum. I think it will be very practical and something that will help you in your research project. It's always good to outline your ideas and talk about them. Even when you think that they might be very simplistic or you're like, oh, it's not worth talking about. No, it is. Everything you write is worth talking about. You're taking the time and the effort to do it. You should show it off, right? So let's talk about the research project part two. Part two, electric boogaloo. Let's go in this. <laughs> so your task is to write a four to five page paper that explains why the theme you identified in part one, which we did last week, matters. So you're talking about why is it significant? Why is it timely? Why is it more likely to be important in the future? So again, things that that discussion forum is having you elaborate on that you can repurpose and rephrase and polish up to put in your paper here. Now, obviously you need to use MLA format and I've got that PowerPoint at the beginning on our homepage. Uh, if you have trouble with MLA, it's way up here at the top. It's right there. There's a source citation presentation right there for you to use at your disposal. And it should have five or more sources. So. Uh, some hints, you should restate the theme at the beginning. Don't summarize the text or repeat your previous essay. Obviously it needs to be something new, but you can restate your theme. Um, you need to think in terms of magnitude, like how big this thing is, the time frame and probability. What, what I mean by that is you've gotten so much time to write this paper, so don't put this off to the last minute. Start on it today, get something done. Um, I had a friend in college that they would write you know, a page a day. They have a week to work on a paper. They would try to make it their goal to do half a page to a page a day. And that seems like a lot, but honestly, it's double spaced. It's not that much. And if they could focus on that, then it made the final project seem much smaller than it was, right? So if you could even do, you've got a week. So if you could even do half a page a day, that's not that much. That's actually pretty easy to do. And that way you don't feel rushed and you have some time left over to kind of tweak and manage it, right? It's so also think in terms of probability, like how much are you gonna get done a day and kind of plan for that. So connect your text to real world trends and events. You know, again, like the example of, you know, Mary Harper and like To Kill a Mockingbird, like are there publishing companies doing this now? And I could research that, I could get on my search engine and be like, are there elderly authors being peer pressured by publishing companies? And something might come up, you never know. It seems like a really specific topic, but something might come up. And remember to cite five or more sources, both in the text and on a works cited page. So yes, I do have a lot of students forget this part. They will have a works cited page with five sources on it, but then in the text, they only remember to mention like two of them. And I'm like, where's these other sources at? So don't forget to do that in your paper. So as far as the rubric goes, similar to the last one last week, you have your ideas, which are in terms of following directions, your thesis, development, effectiveness, 
your organization, um, your introduction, arrangement, ideas, trans transitions, and conclusion, um, the writing style, and the presentation. So grammar, formatting, citations, all of this adds up to 100 points for this part. It's just like part one. So um, do I need to use the same text as part one? Yes, your two parts should be, they should fit together to make one paper. The whole point of this is giving you more time to write a giant paper by splitting it into multiple parts. So yes, they have to be about the same thing. Um, what if I don't know what to say? So here's a, here's a really good um, idea. And I got this from Miss Billman actually, and I really liked it. So I like using it. Um, think of your text theme as an argument. Do you agree or disagree with it? Some of you, if you're asking a research question, you either agree or disagree with the answer, right? So we as humans like arguing. <laughs> we just do. I, I say a lot of people say, oh, I don't like drama. I don't like that. But but we do kind of like saying our opinions and defending them, even if we don't like arguing or debating. So I feel like we always like standing up for ourselves and what we believe in. So if you agree or disagree with your theme, I think that can give you a lot of space to talk about that, right? And you can also find proof to support your answer. It doesn't have to be your own opinion. It can be from the book itself. It can be from news sources, social media. There are ways you can cite tweets. So you can do interviews. I mean, there's lots of things to do to find research. Like I said last week, my, my thesis for my master's degree was about how cattle farmers use Facebook and social media and it was 107 pages long. So if you can do 100 pages off a topic like that, I know you can write four pages off a topic like this, right? But what if I don't have four to five pages? So you wanna make sure you have a really nice introduction that gives context, you wanna add source material from the text. Now, that doesn't mean just big chunks of quoted text. You want this to be in your own words, right? So just make sure you're paraphrasing, you're rephrasing it in your own words, you're analyzing it, you're taking that source material and breaking it down, and you want to add in your own thoughts as well. So, you guys are super close. We have this week, next week, and finals. You are so close. I know you can do this. And I know that it gets stressful this time of year. I was in college for six years straight and then two years after that. So I, I know what it is like to be pushed up against finals week. It is very stressful. I fully understand, but I know you can do it. And if you have questions, please let me know. Come by my office, email me. If you're stressed, let someone know about it, okay? And we can work stuff out and like think of how you can time manage and things like that. So don't hesitate to send me a question, especially if you get to a, a rough spot and you're like, I don't know. And then you can always email me and let me know. You can also send your papers to Joanna Lane at Joanna, J-O-A-N-N-A dot Lane, L-A-N-E at SIC.edu. She's our English tutor and she is at any level of an English class, she is happy to read papers for. So if you wanna send her your draft and say, hey, Miss Lane, can you look this over and make sure it makes sense? She will be happy to do so. So that is our assignments for this week. Y'all, I'm really excited for this class to be rounding up, but I'm sad that it is as well because you all have been a great group of students. So those are the assignments for this week. Um, I'm really excited to see what y'all put in the discussion forum, and I will be back next week to talk about our last full week of class, and then we'll talk about finals after that. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back very soon, guys, with week 16 of English 122. Bye!